Hi, welcome to episode podcast number 10, I think it is, of Continental Drift Nets. I'm Lisa and I've just got my notes down there. And uh, yeah, where am I? I'm in New Zealand. I'm in Queenstown, New Zealand. We're home. It is nice. Travel's lovely, but um, it's nice to be home. And uh, yeah, coming to you today, it's the 7th of June I think it's Thursday so whatever the first Thursday in June is I think it's the 7th and uh, it's the morning and it's about three degrees I think we've had frost on frost on frost I'll put a little picture up here of of the frost out the back um, we don't get any sun out the back of our house and um, we've had four days of frost on frost on frost that doesn't melt it doesn't go away during the day so <laughs> so we're just coming to grips with all that staying lovely and warm and uh, i think we've we've been good so far though i have i have tended to hunker down so we came back from um melbourne and our trip overseas about uh two weeks ago and uh and i've been a I've been a bit obsessive with my knitting. I've, I've hunkered down. I'm like, go, go, go. It's funny, I, I've got quite um, obsessive. But anyway, people would say I'm already obsessive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway. So let's go. We're already one minute 40 in of dribble. So let's just get going. As you can see, I'm wearing my Copenhagen cardigan. I know the name of it today and uh by petite knit and it's in holst super soft held with drops kid silk mohair it's a really lovely plain round neck cardigan um i'll pop a couple of pictures up here or a little cutaway or something or other and i still need to put buttons on but i'm counting it as finished um and i'm going to put those on just a really simple uh, blue button and I don't wear buttons all that much but I sort of feel like if I could just do the top two that'd be great um, let me take it off and I'll show you a couple of details I quite like oh a bit of static I do get electric shocks shocks in this chair that's the only downside of it the pockets are brilliant um, the pockets has pockets on both sides they're not uh, they're just a fold but inside you basically just use these stitches and go round and round and create a big fold and then you stitch down what I've actually done is not stitch them to the front I don't know what the instruction said to do but this is the way I did it I basically stitched the two halves together and then I just caught it down in the bottom corner of each of the pockets so that they wouldn't fly around so I've got nice little tissue pockets or little bit pockets. They're not deep enough for my phone, but I did make them a little bit deeper than the pattern. Um, but I quite like those those pockets. Uh, where are we? There's the sleeve. And that's how the pocket looks. So, yeah, really nice. I really like it. So I'll put it back on. It's a cold day. Oh, actually. Actually, yeah, put it on for now. That's all right. I hope you've all been well. It's been lovely to talk to a couple of you um, about the decision-making fatigue and the, uh, what was the other one? Oh, fixing, the fixing things. I still haven't done any, so. But uh, a couple of you have just said, go for it. Just have a go. What's worse? I mean, you don't wear the items at the moment, so... Uh, apart from giving them away and are they okay to give away anyway I mean they would be okay but I I quite like them so why would I bother giving them away if I can fix them just in a couple of hours so um FOs I've got one other FO which was meant to be something else but it turned into a basket <laughs> so I haven't even I haven't done ends as anyone who knows me knows I'm not very good at ends so basically I did a basket it, 
I had a plan and you'll see in one of my whips um, I had a plan to so this was done with some weird yarn it's not in my Ravelry uh, and a nine mil needle big fat thing which I found very hard on my hands actually so uh, I'm just using it as a basket I've got to sew that end in and I've got to sew the center end in but that's that's okay that'll probably never happen but that's all right um yeah so what I'm thinking of doing for our front door is when you come in you've got gloves and hats and stuff and and I want to put them somewhere and I want to keep individual peoples together and we're, we're going to have um, our daughter and uh, son-in-law and the two grandchildren come for two weeks in a few weeks time and I sort of would like little boxes or little baskets or little hanging baskets like a little uh there's things called yip yips which I would adapt it's not I don't want to make it a toy but it's basically a little cocoon basket crocheted basket and if they could put their hats and gloves and sunglasses in there or whatever that would I think that would be really good and my, my temptation is we've got a wall as you come in the front door to just put multiple hand um, hooks over the wall so that they can choose different spots to to put their gloves and hats and bits and bobs so I'm still experimenting with that but yeah I ran out of yarn and that was never going to happen so that one's scrapped as an option but it's now holding all my notions all my knit notions um okay so let's have a look at uh, uh whips whips yeah that's all i finished but i mean that's not bad i this was this cardigan was funny it was i cast it on on a whim and i thought it's just gonna be a great cardigan to have there and knit and it was whenever i sort of had to do something complicated I, oh excuse me i'm gonna yawn it's not a tired thing it's a talking thing i haven't talked all morning uh i chatted to my husband briefly but he's he's gone out so um yeah i just put the, i just put this on the needles and i thought it was just going to be a really good basic good staple doesn't matter how long it could take 12 months to get done and as it was i think it was february when i cast it on and march april may three months three and a half four months to finish and uh, i just knit in between so whenever i had when I couldn't do something or didn't want to start something or uh, just wanted some plain stocking stitch, that's what I did. So that was really good. And um, I really enjoyed it. I'm almost at the point of a straight stocking stitch for another project that I'm on. So, but that's an obsessive knit that I'll talk about a bit later. So in terms of whips, I got back to New Zealand. I've got three or four whips here. A couple, I, most of them I haven't picked up, but I, ha but I have picked up one. And if you saw my last episode, you would have saw the Croft cardigan I was wearing. And I said to you, the bands were too tight and they were pulling up. Well, I had done a band on my mile shirt jacket and it was exactly the same. So I think I've got a tendency to do two tighter bands. So now what I did in Mantelope 2, I pulled out, um, I pulled out, I don't know whether you can see that, all my, my band, on the, I'd only done one, and I ended up with all these little tiny balls of, um, of Mantelope. I ended up with four balls of Mantelope, tiny little ones, because it broke three or four times. But it actually did un undo quite well so i'm hoping to have that finished for next time and blocked actually i blocked it before i did the bands um but even then my bands were too tight i don't know whether i go whether i need to put more stitches on the needles or whether i need to um use bigger needles 
So the body's on a six mil, the ribs on a five mil needle. I think I just need to take, pick up more stitches and pick up more stitches closer to the edges. So I don't end up with this sort of the bottom of the, of the bottom of the uh, product. And then I sort of get this gap that goes in like that. It's not, it doesn't look good. So anyway, um, oh no, it goes, the band sort of starts like that rather than starting out like that. So whether I need to do something different with the end stitches or oh, I'm not really sure. If you've got any ideas, that'd be good. Um, the only other thing that I have been carting around with me and not doing much work on, did did I had to get a blood test yesterday and um, just did a couple of rows on my socks. So these are uh, Shirley Bryan yarns and I'm just doing sock tubes and I'll do an afterthought heel. For anybody that um, wants a deep dive into afterthought heels because I have a very high instep and if you um, if you think afterthought heels don't fit you properly I have done two or three little additional techniques um, that I've discovered will fit my feet perfectly um, and I have a very high instep so normally any sort even even just adding rows doesn't work for me I think the biggest trick with an afterthought heel where it's a bit tight over the top and it doesn't really fit is use more than half of the stitches for your heel so um, so your heel opening when you put in um, either a scrap piece of yarn for that sort of afterthought heel or a true afterthought heel where you cut um, your knitting and open up 50% of the stitches um, I always open up I think it's two or three on either, either side extra I then do a few rows of straight knitting around to get some depth to the cup of the heel. And then I think, uh, and I would need to go and listen to my own podcast. Um, and then I uh, do a couple of short rows. So um, yeah, but it's all described there. So the short rows sit right where the gusset would be. Um, just to give you once again a little bit more of an expansion in in that um, in that heel cup, and then just do a normal um, decrease heel, uh, however you do it. So I just do it like a toe decrease either side, four stitches in around. Um, yeah, so I think that's episode one or two. It might be episode two. Uh, I'll pop it down below what it is. So um, I just work on these whenever I feel like it. I've got one done. Actually, the one that's in here. So I sort of know where I need to get to because they were sister pairs of, in terms of the, the way they died. So I know I've got that far to go so it's not far actually I should try and finish them and then pop the heels in and I've got another pair I can see from here that I've got one heel in and I've got to do the second heel so I'll have um, I'll have three goes at heels and then I'll get on to another pair and just have them but I think they could be very warm for our wintry weather so it's uh, it's very cold here in Queenstown so we've had, yeah, as I said, we had four, we've had four frosts in a row and we're in the lee of a hill, so we don't get much sun here. And uh, it's very frosty. It's about, yeah, it's three degrees. I think it got down to minus three or minus four. And I think we're getting tops of four or five, maybe in the, you know, sort of in the sun almost. But, uh, but it's beautiful and stunning. It's just visually a feast outside and, and uh, I keep posting if you watch my Instagram. So on Instagram, I'm CDK Podcast, and on um, uh, no, on no, no, I'm not. I'm Continental Drift Knits on Instagram, and I'm CDK Podcast on Ravelry. Sorry. So that's Continental Drift Knits on Instagram, 
and um, CDK podcast on Ravelry. Also have a, an email address and that's down below if you need to get me that way. Um, yeah, but I try, I certainly read every uh, comment on YouTube and I try and answer. I don't have that many comments, so it's pretty easy at the moment to answer. Um, unless I miss one, of course, and I apologize if I do, but uh, yeah. So they're the socks. They're not getting that much work, but it is surprising how much work can go on them if you just pick them up like this randomly and have them out. And that's what I'm trying to do more of. I'm trying to do more of having them out and uh, and getting them done that way. So, yeah. Just doing a bit of knitting. I'm watching myself, so I'm not watching you. So I'll just get to the end of this. So I'm magic looping. I use tiny needles, but I find I wear through I use Chai Gu two millimeter needles. Um, but I find if I go too big with the size of the needle, then I end up just rip, I just rip straight through. So I haven't got my AirPods in today. I hope it's not too echoey, so we'll see. All right, I'll pop those down. Um, Oh, well, my other crochet project is these, uh, this experiment with my, these little pouches. So I went yesterday and got two balls of acrylic yarn and a five and a half mil needle this time. And I've just got to the bowl and then I'll, um, so it's basically that I'll knit I'll crochet I'll crochet up to about there and then I'll um, go backwards and forwards and create an opening so I'm thinking of opening about this big people get their hands in and out and get things in and out and then um, then it goes to a peak and puts a loop on it so you put the loop over the over the hook but we'll see just experimenting with that so um, I'll let you know how it goes I can't remember which way it goes I think it goes that way it's a bit of fun so I think I'll have I mean these are huge balls so hopefully I'll have enough to do a few brightly colored ones rainbowy ones and the kids will enjoy those and hubby can use them too so that's my other little crochet project that I've got on the go. So I've been a bit sweater obsessed, a bit jumper, jumper mad. Uh, I think I was talking about all the swatches that I did of the brioche project. So that's a cardigan for my sister. She's gone back to Vancouver now. Hi, Jen. And I'm doing this in, oh, oh, they're my little balls of mantelope that I ended up pulling off the ribbon. I'm using Rauma yarn, Rauma fennel from, um, I bought that at Little, little Woolly in Australia and combining it with, sorry, another crochet scrap alpaca lang lang alpaca super light so putting those two together very lovely and very happy with how this is coming out excuse all my okay so that's the back it's actually the back so. my only concern is it's not big enough. It will block out a little bit more. It's a double knit, very interesting technique, double knit um, collar. And then the increases happen here. And then I'm on a straight stretch down the back. And then uh, I think once I get, I'm sort of modeling it off another cardigan I've got, because she's tried that cardigan on and said, 
that size is fine. She's much smaller than me, so. Um, but I think it's really lovely. I think I've, it's on a very small needle. So it's gonna take me a while. It's on a three millimeter needle. But it just, it's one of those that you just, it just grows over time. Like you just do a few rows here, a few rows there. I've popped, I've sort of popped it down a bit at the minute, um, just momentarily, cause I'm pretty obsessed at the moment with one particular project. So that's the Agneta cardigan. I realized I didn't say it. That's the Agneta, A-G-N-E-T-E -E, cardigan by Petite Knit. It's a brioche project. I've never done brioche before. So um, it's okay so far. You've just got to be able to read your knitting. The biggest issue is if you drop a stitch, uh, which you can do there, it's not hard to do. It And it drops down. You've got to know what to pick up where, like, because the knits in brioche have two strands over them. And in my case, they've got four strands over them. And then your pearls like like it's two then nothing then two then nothing then because your pearls are slipped so yeah it's a bit tricky so I, I think i've worked it out i've had to pick up one or two stitches and i haven't yet had to rip it back so um if i had to rip it back i don't do lifelines so that will be problematic if i need to do that so let's hope not so the other thing i did I think I spoke to you last time about my husband's, um, uh, yeah, jumper in Gilead in the granite colorway. So that's by Durerum Natura. Sorry about my creaky. I need to get some things on this. Um, basically I've, I told you I had to rewrite the pattern. I didn't have to rewrite the pattern, did I? So what I had to do was I had to block the piece that I was knitting. So before I did any further than the um, end of the sleeve. So basically I treated this like a big swatch, treated that like a swatch. It's, bas it's a pieced item, so unlike say a top down sweater which is a jumper which is a bit harder to do as a swatch um this is knitted flat and sewn together that'll be fun not anyway i've got better at sewing over the years um bog standard tea by the time by the way i buy yorkshire here um yeah so all i had to do was block it out so he's a little bit longer in the arms. So I was down about here when I blocked it. And I'm pretty happy with that. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? So there's two of the same cable. Uh, the center one is an eight stitch repeat. And then two of the same cable again and a reverse stocking stitch. But it's really interesting. You get into quite a, I, de I didn't have to look, after about here, I didn't have to look at the pattern um, because you know what the cables are doing. You know which way they're traveling. So you know, for example, as they cross over, they're coming in and then they cross over and they're going out. So based on the stitches, based on the rows before, you can see, okay, they were going in. Now I've got to cable them which way to the cable, I just look at the cable below. I did have to do surgery on one cable about here. I went the wrong way and uh, ended up having to drop down about 10 rows. And just, just what I did was I dropped down 10 rows of this amount of stitches and just, and re-knitted them up um, with some double pointed needles. So, Basically, when I blocked it, it blocked perfectly. It blocked to the right size. So I thought, right, I'm not mucking around. I'm going to just knit. And uh, I did do it a little bit longer. I did put one extra, probably shouldn't have, 
I did put one extra increase in a lot up, up higher. Um, just one extra increase about there, I think. You can see it's, uh, it's there. Um, and then as I went down, as I knitted, um, you have to knit, uh, you have to decrease two stitches every two rows on this section. And I did obviously one extra of those. Now, as it turns out, I was very lucky because in combination with the number of extra rows I did and the increase decrease bizo I did, I actually ended up in the right spot for this section. And as the pattern doesn't really tell you that you have to end up in the right spot for this section, but I'm very glad that I ended up in this spot for the right section because it meant that I finished uh, with the right thing over the over the shoulder of the cable, over the shoulder, the saddle bit. So basically that's a saddle shoulder up there and it will go under there. He's bigger than me. He's about six foot two. And that'll be the sleeve of his. And you can see it's a bit big on me. I hope it's not going to be too big on him. We can block it to the right to the right size, so that's fine. Although I do have a tendency to make sleeves too long, <laughs> so it's going to be like there, isn't it? It's going to be there. Maybe I should pin it on him. He has got long arms. He's always, he always has to get long. Oh, I think that'll be fine. Great for me. I like that. That's really nice. That looks lovely like that. So that's the Savin sweater by Megan Babin, I think think and um, I haven't cast on the next sleeve I'm gonna to have to copy what I've done because I did I did those slight variations so I'm gonna to have to copy what I've done exactly otherwise I'm gonna end up with two wonky sleeves and uh, yeah so I'll get onto that in the, in the this coming week I'll um, I'll get back onto that and get this so we'll, I've got three jumpers going at the moment and it's probably a bit much I probably need to just have two because I really want to do some hats and I, what I really want to do the hats in and I've just undone I've just is the Dehesa de, Ber Dehesa de Berrera and I got three colors of that and I really ooh, ooh, I've already done one hat in the gr dark green I really like that too. That's by Wool Dreamers. Um, but I haven't got onto that. So we're just throwing that away. So there's lots of whips. If you look in my Ravelry queue, I've got blankets. I've got crocheted blankets. I've got knitted blankets, bits and bob blankets. I haven't done anything on. I've got, um, I've got a whole so my you know my brown jumper with um that's the natural yarn i bought in new zealand with that spun with the extra all the pops color in it i've got a whole uh hand spun um lot jumper quantity for my husband daryl so he's going to get two jumpers in the next year or so um yes i've got i've still got a whole cone of Holst super soft in the in a dark green that I could use uh, for a jumper or a cardigan, and I'm re I really really would love to do the pressed flowers cardigan. So um, that's getting me excited. It's about what I do when really. The other thing I wouldn't mind doing is a uh, wool camisole that sits underneath all my not to wear on the outside um for me that's fine it's early winter here and we're going to get quite cold for quite an extended period of time so i'd like to 
I'd like to um, experiment with a next to skin soft yarn that uh, I could knit into a camisole that would sit under my clothes and keep me nice and warm. So that I am looking for some good thermal tops and pants and uh, I probably only need one or two sets initially and but they're very expensive. Um, I don't think I could knit something fine enough so to be to not be a Michelin sort of person so I don't think I'll do that but yeah trying to plan for the winter now there's snow on the hills no snow in the ski ski areas though they're a bit nervous but ski season doesn't open for a couple of weeks and it certainly got colder so hopefully when the snow when the rain comes the snow will come as well my last whip is a very obsessive whip uh, I cast it on two three days ago today's day three I think and I'm about to split the sleeves so I've had a dilemma with this one actually it goes like that uh, oh about there because there's there's um the short row shaping is at underneath the um, underneath the color work so I have a dilemma with this one I bought this pattern like a number of months ago and I didn't realize that it was not size inclusive and I was actually really disappointed because I think the designer has a lovely aesthetic I mean beautiful aesthetic And in fact, I have another one of her patterns and I planned to knit it. Um, I don't know whether I'll knit it or whether I'll just riff and do something different of my own, like, but in a similar vein. Um, so I've decided I'm not gonna link this below. Um, as an example, I have a 110 centimeter bust which I've got no idea what, how many inches that is. Hang on, let me work it out and I'll, I'll let you know. So I have a 110 centimetre bust. Um, 110, I could have said, hey, Google, couldn't, couldn't I? Um, that's a 43 inch bust, um, or 43.3. I don't think I'm huge. Like, yeah, sure, I'm not a size eight or 10. Like I'm not little, um, now that's Australian UK clothing size. And so really small would be eight, um, not plus size, but getting to the upper size of general retail would be a 16. So, and they go in twos, so eight, 10. 12, 14, 16. And throughout my life, I've probably been a 12 to a 16. Um, and often in tops, I'm, I'm a 14. So I'm 14 to a 16, depending on the sizing of the clothes and the fit and the shape and all the rest of it. And I try and I don't get too hooked up in clothing, but I'm the biggest size in this. I, I now I am doing it a little bit oversized, um, but I'm almost the biggest size in this and I don't think that's very fair I think there's four no, there's five maybe five five maybe six sizes um, but they're all very retail chainish you know and I just don't think people should have to miss out um, or have to do all their own numbers I don't think that that's fair so um, I wanted the pattern and I wanted the, I wanted to do it, but I think what, I think what I'll do is not, not link it. If you go into my Ravelry page, it will be on my Ravelry page. So you can see what it is. It's a Badger and Bloom sweater by Anne Benzel, but I'm just really disappointed that, um, I'm the biggest size. 
yeah, you know, I'm not tiny, but I'm also not huge. And I, even if you are, I mean, it's it's just ridiculous that that I'm the biggest size in the pattern. It's just so restrictive, and she restricts herself from her own from her own um for her own sales too. I just don't understand why a designer would do that. I don't think. I think if newbie designers can, like the Crab Bag can can do size inclusive patterns there is no reason that an established designer can't so uh, anyway it's my little rant so i've decided not to link this sweater um and i've called it the sweater with no name <laughs> on my uh on my ravelry uh and so i will um I will do something like that underneath just to point out what it was and the yarn and that sort of thing, but I won't link it. But you can go and have a look if you need to go and have a look for what it is. Um, so I'm doing that in EcoSoft. Can you tell I've got all these baskets around me? My husband goes, oh, the area's a mess. So I'm doing it in Isaya EcoSoft. 50% alpaca, 44% organic cotton, 56% uh, alpaca, 44% organic cotton, 50 grams is 125 meters. I'm doing it on uh, five and uh, five mil needle for the body, or for the stocking stitch, and six mil for the um, color work. And I'm doing the, uh, let me see, E40, E4S. So that one's E2S and that one's E4S. The contrast is not drastic. Um, the pattern recommends Camaro's, um, Camaro's uh, Snefnug, but it does actually say that ECA, EcoSoft is the same, um, works to the same. And once again, I just keep all my things in those. Um, but I'm, I really want to wear it. <laughs> I think this is a product knit. I don't think this is a process knit. Uh, I really want it to wear. I want to be able to put pop it over something like this. And uh, it's it got quite a deep underarm. And I just am about to split for sleeves. And now it told me I've got to do five more rounds before I slip, split for sleeves. And I don't want to. I want to split for sleeves. Uh, I have less. Eco soft than I'm supposed to have, so I have um, I only have two balls of this one. But in fairness, I've only gone through one ball. Um, it's supposed to have uh, at the sleeves and at the base, but I'm not really worried. Probably do it at the sleeves and see what I've got left. Um, Yeah, because I may not have enough. And if I don't have enough, I'll just have to order some. But I don't know whether I can get it in New Zealand or Australia. I know Sunspun in Australia has Isaya. Um, I don't know. There's another, there's a yarn store here that has Isaya in Auckland, I think. But I couldn't see EcoSoft on their site. So it's incredibly warm. It's incredibly light. Like, I mean, when you think that's about 100 grams um it's not much but i do love it so yeah so that's on my whips i've done a lot of knitting so i'm keen to know what you're knitting if you're in the southern hemisphere what are you knitting um what's your favorite patterns what are you looking at knitting next uh grocery girls are doing a granny along I'm tempted, but I really want these things done and I want my mile shirt jacket and I want my winter woods and I want to knit the boys some um, hats. So I don't think there's much room in the next couple of months for many um, knit alongs, although unless my projects fit into the knit alongs that are there. And, uh, and we're also, going 
I'll, I'll grab mine. So that's all I've got in terms of whips and when I say all, it was 30, 40 minutes later. Um, yeah, so that's all I've got in terms of what I'm knitting. But um, we are also, for work, I think I mentioned we have to go to the Philippines. Uh, so we have staff in the Philippines that we've had for many years and we love them dearly and we have not been able to see any of them since the pandemic. So it was 2019 when we last went to Manila and we used to go every year. Um, they opened up a bit later than everybody else and the situation was a little bit unstable there for a while and, and we don't have an office there anymore. So um, we gave up our office when people had to go and work from home and it was gonna be years and years, so it wasn't really worth it. So we have a serviced office we can access, I think, I'm not sure. But we've said to our general manager that, hey, let's take your wife, child, and our HR manager and uh, and her partner, and we're gonna go, who are also the directors of the company over there, and we're gonna go to um, a resort. <laughs> so it's really tough life. <laughs> no, it'll be busy. We will be doing lots of work. So, um, and it'll, it would just be so nice to see them. Uh, they're just such genuine, lovely, lovely people. And we've worked with them for six, seven years now. Um, and just adore having them work for us. So, um, so we're going to, uh, we're going to the, we're going to Melbourne for Daryl's birthday, that's my husband. Um, so we'll leave here on the 5th of July. We'll go to Manila on the 13th of July and then be in Manila for eight days and then come back to Melbourne for two or three. And then we have all our munchkins coming over and our Bear and Bud and their mum and dad are coming to, uh, are coming to stay with us for two weeks in our little three bedroom home. So that's gonna be a challenge, having six of us here in one living space with two year old and a four year old. <laughs> so they're hoping there's snow and we're hoping there's there'll be um, a chance to go up to the snow and play and do all those sorts of things. So I hope, I hope there is good snow by then. <laughs> and um, and then we don't move. We're not moving. We're not going anywhere until October. And uh, I think we go back to Australia for a couple of weeks in Australia, in October to see our parents. And then um, back here. And then back to Australia for our three months break over there when we go, uh, or two and a half months, where we go for Christmas and the summer holidays over there. Yeah, so... Life's sort of planned out till February. Um, however, it's not planned out day to day. So we're uh, doing a few jobs around here. We've um, got a coat rack up and I'm trying to do these little crochet things and make it make the house a little bit more functional. Um, hubby's focused on a bin store, you know, all those sort of really interesting things. But uh, doing a lot of work on fitness and better food and haven't cracked the exercise thing yet, but I've got to get onto it. I know I do. I just hate it. I know it's an attitude thing. I realise that. It doesn't come naturally. I fall over. I get sore. I get really sore really quickly. So it's not much fun when you're trying to just make yourself sore so if anyone else has been like that for most of their life I mean I've played sports and I've done some stand-up paddle boarding I've done I mean I've done skiing but then I did then I hurt myself I hurt my knee um yeah I don't know anyone got any hints as to how you get moving apart from just do it I know that one. So anyway, um, 
I don't think there's a lot more to say at the moment. There's a, obviously I got over my decision-making phase. I think once we got back here, I was able to just have time. There was no other interruptions. I was off um, golfing and I had sort of four or five, six hour stretches. We've been doing lots of work. We're working till about 10 or 11 at night. We start at normally three, two or three in the afternoon and work into the evening. So lots of work, lots of end of years for New Zealand, um, UK, they were both March end of years and then Australia end of year is um, uh, end of June. So doing some planning and doing some stuff with accountants and I do all that. So um, post, post trip, uh, catch up has been going for 10 days so far and I'm not quite there yet but hopefully over the next two days work I will be back on top so that's very pleasing to get to that point I won't have a little question I saying when will those ready ready when will those books be ready when will, when can we do this have we got onto this have you done this I'm like yes it's all coming so we agreed the end of this week um, I'd have it all up to date and that's my day that's my day job um, so to speak so that's what I'm doing over the next two days and what I've been doing over the last nine or ten work day or last seven work days eight work days um, although we had a public holiday day here on Monday so that was a nice little break King's birthday um, that's about it if you've got any questions if you've got any life questions happy to to um, answer any any questions you like uh, if you want to tell me something if you want to show me something feel free to message me on continental drift knits and on Instagram or here I can't really do attachments here but messages on IG are good I look at that most days and uh, yeah I hope you have a lovely uh, week or couple of weeks I'll try and do this while I'm here I'll try and do this fortnightly because then we may get an interruption um, I'll have to think about what I'm taking to Manila because it is rainy season so I don't know whether I'll I don't know how I'll go there. I don't know what we'll do. So maybe maybe take this sort of thing. Uh, if you've got any great travel warm weather little knits, because I like to keep my hands busy, um, let me know what they are. And I'll, uh, I mean, granny squares are another thing I could do. Um, sort of needs to be portable, needs to be lightweight. I'm going to try and keep to either a car. Oh, we've, we've got baggage but I just don't want to have a lot of baggage so we'll either have one case between us or um, certainly from from Melbourne to Manila um, we'll either have one because I might need more to take winter stuff over to wear in Melbourne um, but it'll be quite warm it's warm rainy season uh, so we'll yeah, I want to travel lightly, so I need some light projects, two or three light projects. So I need to put my thinking cap on for that. That'd be great. If you could give me what you would do if you had the option. So, all right. Have a great day. All right. See ya. Bye.